Out of the Ordinary Insights, brought to you by Investec Specialist Bank. Well, welcome to Captains of Industry, and this week we profile Karen Buglisi, who is the global brand president of MAC Cosmetics. And today we're currently in their recently opened store here in Sandton City, a lovely one, I must tell you, at that, uh, with a large variety of uh, makeup products available. But Karen, thank you so much for joining us. It's my pleasure. Thank you. You're all the way from the United States of America. What brings you to South Africa? Well, we have exciting expansion plans here in South Africa. I've never been here, by the way. This is my first trip. Oh, my. And I'm so excited by what I see. Um, I think there is so much potential for MAC here in South Africa, and you probably even know that we've recently opened Sub-Saharan Africa, so mm -hmm. that's why I'm here. Let's touch on those expansion projects. This store, if I'm not mistaken, was opened rather recently in the month of August 2013. Yes. And as I understand, you're looking to expand even further into South Africa for the moment, as well as on the rest of the continent. Well, in the next three years, we'll almost double our distribution in, in South Africa and also double the number of cities we're in. We're now in eight cities, we'll go to 16. In Sub-Saharan Africa, we're gonna open three countries in, in the next three years. You know, we have three countries now. Mm -hmm. So we're going to open three more in the next three years. And then we may even find even more possibilities for the brand. So nice. we're excited. Very true. I know you've also seen great success in countries like Nigeria, but what took so long, Karen? What took so long to get into the African market? Well, I think the African market had to be ready for us too. Sub-Saharan presented other challenges to us because it, there wasn't a in retail infrastructure. Mm. So we had to wait for that to be ready, but now we're ready. Now we're there, and now we're gonna go further. Let's take a look at uh, the beauty of a business, or rather the business of beauty cosmetics. MAC, uh, a lot of people might know it as a, as a makeup artist, a brand with yes. presenters like myself using the product as well. But what, what entails, or what, what does the beauty of business, or the business of beauty entail? Well, it entails, um, oh, it's a lot. It's big. Uh, if I could just focus on MAC for a moment, would you mind? MAC, we're in uh, almost 89 countries now. Uh, we have almost 2,000 doors. By the end of our fiscal year uh, 14, which ends in June of 2014, we'll have almost 2,000 doors in, in the world. Um, I can tell you that 30% um, of those doors are own freestanding stores like the one we're in now. That's very exciting for us. And we're a makeup artist brand. You know, we, um, we have 15,000 makeup artists around the world that represent us. They're the advocates of the brand. And that's what we do every day. So come into our stores, get a demonstration, get an application, feel better about yourself, um, look better, and, uh, and kind of uh, enjoy us. You mentioned that MAC is a makeup artist brand. How it much is. training or, or, or instruction goes into ensuring that those makeup artists know how to use the brand appropriately? Well, we invest a lot in our training. I'm glad you asked that. Every artist has to go through a five-day basic training. And then once a quarter, they'll come back for a full-day update on new trends, on new products. And beyond that, we have a certification process. So we have 12 levels of certification. To work at a Mac store, you have to achieve the four basic retail skills, which is the first four uh, certification levels. What do those four skills entail? Okay. It's a focus demo. So we take one area of your face, so your eyes, and in 10 minutes, we're gonna recreate your eyes, or your cheeks, or your lips. Peak hour demo is you do a perfect makeup in 20 minutes. The hardest thing to do, by the way. And then we have our communications, how we communicate to our customers while we're servicing them, an application, which is um, a little bit more expansive uh, demo of makeup. Karen, let's also take a look at uh, some of the challenges that you might have faced as a business leader. No doubt it's, it's not easy being in your position, hence the traveling as well as understanding the global product as a whole. What are some of the challenges that you face on a day-to-day -day basis? Well, I think one of the, if I can say for brand, for the brand Mac, I think one of the challenges is that we have, we were a very small company not too long ago. Very, uh, very connected. When I came in 1998, John Dempsey brought me in. He was the general manager. That's also the year that Estee Lauder Corporation purchased, the, purchased MAC 100%. And we were a very small, small company. And now we've grown to a bigger business. And how do you keep that, that feeling of community, of connection? Those 15,000 artists that I talked about around the world, they're part of a bigger community. But what has made this brand so special is how they're connected to the brand, how our customers are connected to the brand. And I think that's our challenge, is, is running a big business with still family values, if you will. And on a day-to-day -day basis, what are the key things that you handle? I, well, 
I think being there is the most important thing you can do. So one of the challenges I have is how do I come to Africa, South Africa, but manage everything I have to do as a global president back in New York. Mm -hmm. So how do you spend appropriately the time that you need in markets, speaking to your staff, speaking, speaking to the people that run the markets, speaking to consumers, seeing the store, seeing what the competitive environment is like, but also balance that with your duties and you know, what you have to do as, uh, as running a, a brand in New York. And I think that to me is my biggest challenge as a leader, because I feel that I, get the, I offer the most value when I'm out here. So we won't be looking forward to you being in your office anytime soon, will we? <laughs> uh, well, after this, I go to, uh, to Cape Town, then I go to Shanghai. So I'm not going to be in my office for the next 10 days at least. Oh, my. Let's touch on some of the makeup trends that you might see, uh, both on an international scale and uh, how those trends tend to unfold. I'm sure everything tends to start in New York. Well, no, it starts every place. Here, the, there's a lip, there's a bold lip going on. Ruby Woo, which is a very... Um, a brilliant red lipstick uh, has that's really emerged as a big trend in Africa. Certainly, also our eyes, you know, eyeliner, uh, smoky eyes. You can never get away from a smoky eye. Uh, but I think now we see is uh, women really love bolder lips, more brilliant color, and we see that every place in the world right now. And also skin. You can't get away from beautiful skin. You know, some of our top selling products, say in Africa, are Studio Fix Foundation which will give you that, that perfect finish. And so I think that's the other trend that's prevalent, not only here, but in many, many markets around the world. And when you take a look at men, I know in South Africa it's a bit taboo for men to purchase makeup, not only for their partners, but for themselves. How does that compare to our, a lot of our international counterparts? Are a lot more men coming on, onto the makeup bandwagon? People think that women are, are more vain than men, and I don't believe that at all. <laughs> I, do you? No. I don't. I think men want to look the best they can look too. And I think a you know, makeup brand like MAC, maybe you're not going to use foundation, but we have tinted moisturizers, which will be brilliant. Moisturizer, you know, you want to have a beautiful, smooth skin, you start with moisturizer. Uh, so tinted moisturizer, moisturizer are products that men can use that would certainly enhance their appearance. And I, I think it's safe to use. Let's take a couple of steps back to MAC as, as a business. I think when a lot of people think of cosmetics or, or makeup, they tend to think that you must make a lot of your money from the fashion weeks or, or from uh, events that might take place, red carpet events, where uh, you have several of your makeup artists assisting celebrities to look good. But how would you say, uh, uh, which might be the strong points, first of all, where you see a strong drive in sales coming from? Is it the retail segment or more from your wholesalers or f maybe from private distributions of makeup? Well, 65% of our business is done in our department stores and perfumeries around the world. That's a huge number. So, so that's a big part of our business. I can say that the fastest growing business that we have now is our freestanding stores and online. E-commerce has emerged as a very important channel for the brand. And when you think about the brand, we're limited door distribution. So 2,000 doors in the world is not a lot of doors, right? Mm -hmm. So the way that the brand becomes more accessible is through online and e-commerce. So that's also been uh, a very important channel and will continue to be very important in the future. I take it in areas like Africa, e-commerce is still a bit of a challenge given the bandwidth as well as logistic, logistical issues uh, with, with getting yes. the product to the clients. I think it's more of a slower build here, but I think we can use e-commerce also to talk about where our stores are at, the services that we offer. So we'll probably take a little bit different approach in this market, but eventually we'll get there. Where would you say that e-commerce has really been a strong performer with regard to your retail sales anywhere else in the world? Maybe the U.S.? Or? Oh, certainly. Um, U.S., Canada, U.K. are the biggest e-commerce businesses that we have. And how do you compare yourself to your competitors? I know Mac has a, has a competitive advantage. You've got several celebrities that you've got under your wing. I understand that you recently launched a product with Rihanna, which has opened officially today globally, as well as the likes of RuPaul. But how would you compare yourselves to, you, to your competitors in the industry? Well, I, I think we, um, we're inspired by our competitors. The one thing about Mac is we know who we are, and we know who we aren't. And we're very rooted in the equity that was established many, many years ago when Frank Tosk and Frank Angelo found the brand. So first, we're a makeup artist brand. Those 15,000 artists I talked about, you know, we nurture, we inspire, we educate, we use them to educate our consumers around the world. That, to me, is a powerful competitive advantage. Secondly, we have our own stores. We have 350 freestanding stores around the world. That's the way we can express the brand's DNA in its purest form. So I think, again, that's something that sets us apart. 
uh, our communities. We have six million fans on Facebook that follow us, six million. Mm. That's a lot of followers. We have over 7.2 million views on YouTube, so we are, we, we are entrenched in, in social media. And um, we love it that our fans want to hear what we have to say. And then we have the trend setting. We, we support 850 global fashion shows every year. We do the backstage makeup. So we're, we're, we're amongst, um, when you think about the influencers in the industry, those professional artists and those designers are certainly big influencers in the industry. And we have a great relationship with them all around the world. And then we have social responsibility. Do you know Viva Glam lipstick? Mm. Do you know 100% of the retail price of Viva Glam goes to organizations that fight HIV and AIDS all mm. around the world? And um, we've raised almost $300 million selling a lipstick that's the equivalent to $15 US, almost $300 million. And we've supported many organizations also in South Africa. So we're, we're very proud of that. Let's so if, if I can tell you, so I'm telling you the story of MAC and maybe you can understand then how we're inspired by our competition, but all we focus on is how do we do MAC better. Mm. Let's touch on to Viva Glam. Uh, I understand that it's one of the strongest campaigns that you have. I recall uh, as a young girl reading through magazines and flipping over a page and seeing several celebrities like the likes of RuPaul are representing the Viva Glam uh, 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 product that you have, or rather not product, but rather initiative that you have. How important is philanthropy for a company like MAC? It's incredibly important. I can, if you ask our artists here why they work for MAC, they work for MAC because they can be a professional makeup artist, but they work for MAC because they can sell a lipstick and make a difference in somebody's life. We can save a life by selling a lipstick. That is powerful. Mm. It's incredibly important. It's one of our core values in the, in, at MAC. Let's touch on, on the, some of the lives that you changed. Uh, where have you used the funds that you've raised for Viva Glam, some in Africa or anywhere else in the world? And what kind of change has it brought about to the communities that you serve? Well, we support organizations all around the world and we have supported efforts with Awareness First, making sure that, that the youth of the world know that you, know, you have to use a condom, by the way. You have to have safe sex. Um, secondly, we have worked on prevention we have worked on mother-to-mother -mother transmission. We have worked on nutrition. So whatever the biggest need is, as we go country by country, organization by organization, that's what we support. What we want to support is just the fight against HIV and AIDS, and we won't stop until it's eradicated. And we've raised almost $300 million around the world since the, the, the inception of, of Viva Glam, selling lipsticks that are equivalent to US retail at $15. That's our staff. It's our spokespeople that raise the awareness, but it's our staff that sell it every single day.